Welcome to the 21st century, an era beyond the wildest dreams of even our most recent ancestors, the age of the computers. And the architects of this age? Computer scientists. But what do these architects look like? Who are they? We all know what to do when we have a question, right? We Google it. So type computer scientists in the search bar and let's see where it takes us. If these results took you by surprise, type yes in the comment section. As expected, we are accustomed to seeing the 21st century architects being mostly men. The million dollar question to ask here is why? Why is there such a gender disparity in the tech industry? Do girls just not code? These questions might seem irrelevant to you, but trust me, while uncovering the answers to these questions, we will discover a larger theme. So stick with me. Before diving into these whys, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Japneth, a computer scientist, a girl, and most importantly, someone who has chosen the road not taken. With the astounding number of tech graduates and computer scientists, tech is a road not taken for me merely because of social conventions, specifically my gender. This journey of tearing societal labels has not been easy, but it's never easy. It has been fulfilling though. Let's just go to the very beginning. I was only 13 when my school's computer club, Minette, recruited me. An incredibly amazing opportunity at that time. I was overjoyed that my programming skills were being recognized by a school's computer club. But soon I discovered that they only recruited me because they wanted a female programmer to make their all-male cadet look more inclusive and diverse. This knowledge made everything very hard and uncomfortable for me. I did not feel like I belonged. I didn't think my voice would be heard or appreciated. So I kept quiet because of the fear of being ignored. Was this a fair way to feel? I had cleared all the interviews, the programming challenges, and I had really earned my place there. Deep down, I did recognize this. But just knowing that I was recruited because of one criterion fulfilled, my gender, made me feel like I did not belong. The computer club was a sea of opportunity that I could not dive into because of so many reasons that these male members would never understand. Whenever they asked me to take part in a competition, I backed out because I lived in a city not safe for women. So I wasn't allowed to travel alone. Thus, I could not commit to events without school transportation. There were so many club night outs, two day hackathons and events till the evening, which I could not attend. And the few events that I did attend, I felt completely out of place, almost as if it was expected of me to fail. Soon, I was reduced to a member in name only. It would have been so much better if there were more female programmers around me. I would have felt like I belonged, I would have uh, taken more charge and participated more and not had this ever present imposter syndrome around me. So I decided to change the gender ratio and started a recruitment drive focusing on girls. Seven guys and five girls signed up. I was ecstatic. Uh, after three months of training, I would have all of these amazing female peers around me. So three months passed and I was still the only girl in the club, but the gender ratio had just worsened because all of the seven boys got recruited, but none of the five girls did. I was so confused, like, why did this happen? So I took it upon myself to go to each and every girl and ask why. And their first response was that coding is intimidating, which I understood. And if you have had any experience with programming, you will wholeheartedly agree. It keeps changing, there's so much to learn, and those R's and R's are looking for that bug that you cannot find. So naturally, my next question was, why didn't you ask for help? There were senior guys who were there to just help you. The girls said that they did not feel comfortable asking. They did not think they could ask them and that their questions were dumb and stupid. A feeling I'm sure that's not foreign to you or me. 
So in the end, with the same training period, the same resources and the same guys helping them out, seven boys got recruited because they felt comfortable asking questions while all the five girls did not. Defeated, I took a back seat, kept my head down, accepted the status quo and honed my skills as much as I could. A few months later, a casual application led to my selection to study in Singapore on a scholarship from the Ministry of Education. While debating whether to go or not to go, one thing was sure. I could not leave Minet with a 1 is to 0 gender ratio again. So I was sure and I decided that I'm going to host this one workshop. One workshop for the girls in my school to change that. It would have female mentors who will be approachable and guide the st students through. The idea sounded very shiny and exciting. The implementation, not so much. There were so many challenges that I had to overcome to get the ship off the ground. The insidious and pervasive nature of biases was never more apparent when trying to rouse participation from, for this workshop. The plan was to get around 25 to 30 girls to participate in a two-day Python bootcamp. Everywhere I went to announce the workshop, multiple hands shot up. I was so excited that the idea was reaching actualization, only to realize that the guys were clamoring to participate, whereas the girls were hesitating. It is incredibly important to pay attention to this incident. Why was this one group so excited to participate while the other was so hesitant. Both the groups had no prior knowledge. They had no set knowledge about the field of computer science, yet the response was divided along gender lines. Days passed without a sign up. I was so tempted to give up, but decided to give it like one last pitch in the morning assembly. And surprisingly, it worked. That day I discovered a secret, that all these girls who were approaching me in the foyer to register, all that they needed was a nudge from like a role model who looked like them. This made me realize that we are stuck in a vicious cycle where seeing less representation of your group in a field reduces your inclination to go into that field. Over the course of this bootcamp, these incredibly hesitant girls blossomed into fearless, unafraid coders ready to break any barriers. In fact, two of them went on to join the school's computer club. Can you imagine? A week ago, these girls were not even sure about attending a computer science workshop. Clearly, it is not about the skill or the propensity for the field that deters people but it is a systematic lack of belief and confidence that it's even a viable field for them. After realizing the complexity and the gravity of the situation, I realized that this problem is widespread in Delhi. So what happened next? The Girl Code was born, a nonprofit to share my love for coding with other girls for free. Such an exciting initiative combining my two passions, feminism and technology. However, it was time for me to leave now. I was so unsure about leaving everything I knew, my family, my friends, and this newfound passion project. While my parents shielded me from the backlash from my relatives, and she will get out of her hands, and who will take care of a 16-year-old girl in a new country, I decided that it would be best for my professional aspirations to go. So I said my goodbyes, established a team in India to handle my nonprofit, and headed for National Junior College. Even after moving countries, I was working according to the Indian Standard Time, coordinating with my team back home at ungodly hours. 2 a.m. meetings with 7 a.m. school in the first month of moving did not go well. I was still adjusting to my new environment and introduced to this concept of A-levels, economics, PW, and GP. Everything was very overwhelming. And I was surprised to learn that the internal biases and the ratio of girls in tech in a third world country like India existed in a first world country like Singapore too. In fact, in esteemed institutions like NUS, the ratio was three is to one. So I wanted to spread the girl code here as well. But I was only a 16 year old girl trying to prove her mettle in a foreign land. I had no network, I had no leads, so I started cold emailing and faced relentless rejection. 
Singapore was like a whole new safe world for me where I could travel anywhere I wanted to, but I had nowhere to go. And this made me question everything. Why did I leave my known to venture into the unknown? Why couldn't I have just been a girl in tech in my old school? But would that be enough for me? I mean, it would be a challenging journey on its own way, like it was. And if I never had the fear of leaving my school's computer club without any girls, my passion project, The Girl Code, would have never existed. This is when I realized that the grass always seems greener on the other side but it's actually greener where you water it. So I started involving my classmates from National Junior College in the Girl Code. I had a TM and now all I needed was a workshop. And my efforts of cold emailing finally paid off when I received a message from an interested student at NUS. I was supposed to meet her at Starbucks the next day. And I would like you all to take one second to put yourself in my shoes. So I just came to a new country. I was already trying to adjust to everything and I was trying to spread my initiative here. And the most important thing that I felt that if I made a mistake, no, I actually believe that if I made a mistake, I would be deported back to India. So I was supposed to meet this girl at the Starbucks at Crown Plaza and I had a one hour break between my classes. So according to my amazing calculations, um, it would take me 10 minutes from NJC to Tankaki and then five minutes more to Crown Plaza. The meeting would last 30 minutes and I'll be back in 15 minutes. Perfect one hour, right? Like nothing could go wrong. Well, it did. Actually, everything went wrong. The meeting ran late. My class was canceled because of an impromptu fire drill where my whole section was standing because I was missing. And I'm not a fast runner. You do the math. But it was worth it. We secured a workshop at the National University of Singapore in August 2018. And this was the highlight of my journey. TGC was officially global. Over the course of the last three years, the Girl Code has grown from a concept to an organization making tangible impact. We have 90 volunteers situated worldwide and chapters in three countries. We have taught over 2000 girls the basics of HTML, CSS and Python. Even the pandemic did not stop the learning. We shifted our in-person workshops to online courses which were mobile friendly and taught in native languages. This way we could empower the even the most remotest rural communities in India. While this may seem trivial to you and me, an English speaking population with the privilege of be having laptops whenever we need them, hosting workshops that only required smartphone to attend in native languages made it possible for us to impact the underprivileged communities in India by making a very tangible idea of technology very real to them. We're also proud to lay collaborations with other NGOs that work for teaching underprivileged children like Saksham Center. The proudest moment for me personally was when we hosted a workshop with the Tara community, which shelters sexually abused girls. TGCA's impact was felt when these five girls from the Tara community were so enthralled by programming and were so excited to ask questions and know more. It has taken 18 missed schools competitions a move 2,580 miles from home and 150 unanswered cold emails to get me where I am today. And the most important thing that I've learned in the duration of my journey is that each road will come with its unique set of problems. But if you keep moving forward, despite the occasional tripping, the small rocks and the twists and turns in the path, you will get somewhere. The irony lies in the fact that what puts you down is also what propels you forward. Let me repeat that. What puts you down is also what propels you forward. The gender diversity issue that I work day and night very hard to solve is also the reason why I push myself so much. It is why I strive so hard. The Girl Code has taught 2000 girls that's 666 girls per year. 
666. It's a mind-boggling number to be confronted with, but it perfectly illustrates the impact you are capable of making. If you want to go into the field where there's no one who looks like you, be that one person to inspire others. If others don't understand the unique struggles you face in a certain field, explain it to them. Tell them where you're coming from, not for your own sake, but even for the future generations. If you're receiving a lot of backlash from your loved ones, the people you expected to support you, filter it out. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you take the road not taken or the road already taken. It's all about taking the road you want to take. Because when you face issues and problems on these roads, and trust me, you will, and there will be a lot of reasons to quit, only your passion, resilience, and the love for your work will get you through. Thank you.